Greetings YouTube, this is Remarkable Republican here once again to bring you the truth with truth flavored bias. I've noticed a whole lot of people like to do top 10 movie lists and they like to talk about the best films from any given decade, but they usually look at those topics with a whole lot of bias and a lot of what they say doesn't make a lot of sense. So tonight what I'm here to do is to bring you an unbiased list which will objectively lay out 10 of the very best movies from the decade. Maybe you'll disagree a bit, but I think that I'll be able to make my case pretty convincingly and that you will be forced to admit that I've come up with a pretty damn good list. My objective criteria are to look at the quality of the film, how well it's made, how well the lines are delivered, etc. The message, whether it is good or bad, whether the story is fundamentally sound, whether it fits the time that it came out in, whether it spoke to people at the time, and also whether it's still good and still relevant. I think these are the only objective ways to look at a film. So before we get into all that, of course, we'll have a long list of honorable mentions since the 80s was a decade with a whole lot of movies. I would have started this film series earlier by looking at, say, the 60s or 70s, but it occurs to me that there probably aren't 10 good movies, 10 truly good movies, that took place between the dawn of film in 1979. If I had to make a top 10 list from that period, I'd have to put on at least three or four movies which wouldn't have made that list for the 80s or any decade since. Film has simply improved by leaps and bounds, especially since 1980, for a whole variety of reasons, which we don't need to get into now. So, without any further ado, let's jump right into honorable mentions. Without any further ado, I'd like to introduce the honorable mentions. Just to reiterate, this is a list of the 10 best movies of the 1980s, not necessarily my 10 favorites. There are a few movies on this list which I would actually rank over the ones that I put on the top 10 if I were just making it based on my opinion, but again, we're being objective. So the honorable mentions for the 1980s, Tracks, a really underrated action movie starring Shadow Stevens, who later went on to have a really important career in radio. Ghostbusters 2, a very good sequel to the original Ghostbusters. Wall Street, probably Charlie Sheen's best acting performance, even if it's not his best movie. Never Say Never Again, the last ever Sean Connery James Bond film. Just FYI, had I made that video about the pre-1980 movies, it would mostly just be Sean Connery as James Bond and then some other shit thrown in to fill out the list. Because those were really the only good movies being made prior to 1980 when the world figured out how to do an action movie properly. Predator, classic, do I need to say more? Full Metal Jacket. Same thing, The Deadpool, the last and best of the Dirty Harry movies. In fact, I would say the only truly epic Dirty Harry movie. Batman with Tim Burton and Michael Keaton. Platoon, Iron Eagle, Top Gun. It's a little corny, but it's undoubtedly good and it deserves the sequel it's getting. Missing in Action 2 and 3, not quite as good as the original, but still pretty damn solid and with an important message. Porky's 1 and 2, two of the better comedies from a decade which really didn't have very many comedies that were good. Lethal Weapon. Do I need to say more? You all know why that's a good movie. Beverly Hills Cop, you all know why that's a good movie. Mac and Me and E.T. the Extraterrestrial. Sure, Mac and Me ripped off E.T. to a certain extent, but it did all the things E.T. did and did them better, so I think it's actually a little better, but neither one of them are quite in the top 10 in terms of objective quality. Hoosiers, pretty good sports movie. I'm usually not a big fan of sports movies, but that one was pretty good. Rambo 2 and 3. I believe it's technically called Rambo First Blood Part 2, and then there's Rambo 3. Both are very solid Stallone movies. Over the Top, a father and son movie about bonding, arm wrestling, and being a man. Good stuff, but not quite top 10. Tango and Cash, this is basically Kurt Russell and Stallone teaming up to take on crime. Pretty good popcorn flick, good party movie, but not quite top 10 for the 1980s. The Karate Kid Part 3. This is probably the best of the Karate Kid films, and it is almost top 10. 976 Evil. Low budget, but excellent plot. With a little bit better effects, if it had had a few more dollars, this would have been top 10 for sure. Deathstalker 1 and 2. These were both very good low-budget fantasy action films. Final Justice. This was a low-budget action film which starred Joe Don Baker. 
The good thing about this movie is that it's very gritty and realistic. Jodan Baker's not all that physically imposing, yet in the movie we establish that he's formidable because he's willing to go the extra mile to pursue bad guys, and he has a very strong sense of justice that propels him beyond his physical limitations. Of course, we would need a more compelling action star to really make all of this work. The good thing about the 80s as a whole is that the 80s is really the decade where people figured out how to do action. Gone are the sweat fests of 1970s where people just sit in rooms under hot lights and are clearly just beaming from all the sweat on their faces. They figured out how to do lighting properly and everything just looks and feels better, scripts are better written, lines are sharper, everything improved. And I think a lot of it has to do with having an actor in the White House, Ronald Reagan, who really revived the American spirit. So that is what drove a lot of these to their status of semi-great. But let's look at the movies which achieved true greatness, define the 1980s, and are gems that will never fade. Movies that you can watch at any time and always be impressed by. Number 10, Red Dawn. This is the 1984 original starring Patrick Swayze, Charlie Sheen, and other famous actors. This movie is great because it captures Cold War fear and the reality of what this would have been like had the Russians actually invaded the United States. Now, obviously, you couldn't really make a movie about a nuclear war. Or there wouldn't be much of a movie, but you could make one about a conventional war. And this is about really rising to the challenge of freeing your country, even when you're extremely young, like all the characters in this movie. And I think they do a great job of showing the evolution of these high school kids into American soldiers. The cast is excellent, as I said. The writing is great. The delivery is even better. And if anything, this is very much 1980s um, at its peak. Because what you see throughout this movie and throughout a lot of 80s cultures is a really, really strong love of country. The kind of thing that we wouldn't see again until 2016 when Trump inspired so many Americans to be proud of their country again. Number nine is Firefox. The 1980s had a lot of great action movies and a lot of them involved aircraft, but the best airplane-based action movie of the 1980s and one of the best ever is Firefox. This is one of the few times where Clint Eastwood does action set outside of the Old West and he proves that he has the range. It has the Cold War background that was done so well in the 1980s. It has espionage and it has action. Clint Eastwood is an American pilot slash spy who sent the steel a Soviet uh, prototype weapon, and he does just that, of course. It also features one of the greatest dogfights in cinematic history, which has some sort of made-up speculative technology that works really well and that they probably developed now because they saw it in this movie, and a lot of engineers then grew up and were inspired to have backward-firing missiles. Great movie and one that's easily overlooked, but something that you absolutely owe it to yourself to watch. Number eight, The Wraith. If I had to pick any one movie to be Charlie Sheen's best performance, I would have to pick The Wraith. This is when he was at the height of his popularity, but also hadn't been dumbed down by drugs yet. This is a movie which shouldn't be as good as it is. It's basically a teenage drama with some supernatural elements, so it had the potential to be mediocre and forgettable. But really what it does is it takes a lot of existing ideas and makes them into something way better than the stuff that it builds upon. If I had to describe it in just one sentence, it would be similar to, but better than Knight Rider. In fact, Knight Rider kind of sucks and is aged like milk, but The Wraith has aged like wine. This is the best movie you saw on TV as a kid and didn't know the name of. So if you have cable still and they show this on a lot of channels, if it's a movie that features a young Charlie Sheen, it has a car, and he transforms, and there's murder and action, but also a lot of scenes of teenagers at diners, the action is really tight, and the dialogue's really good, then you probably are thinking of The Wraith. For whatever reason, a lot of people don't know what this movie is called, but they should, and they should make sure to watch it in the end in order to fully appreciate how great it actually is. Number seven. License to Kill. This is Timothy Dalton's second James Bond movie. It ended up being his final movie, and there are a lot of people who try to hate on this movie, 
but they simply don't know what the fuck they're talking about. This is one of the best Bond movies of all time, and in terms of being a pure action movie, this is the best Bond movie ever. In the previous film, where Timothy Dalton made his debut, we set up a lot of character, and we see that Bond is more of a commando than a spy, or at least that commando-type activities are key to his character. Bond, of course, runs into problems because of his harsh methods, especially when the British try to back off a little bit. So now there is a politically correct MI6. I guess the Labour government took over under a younger Jeremy Corbyn or something like that. So Bond has to go rogue in order to get the job done. He ends up fighting drug dealers and working with the American CIA. What this does is really expand the idea of national security to include the drug war. So it's very much in line with the reality of the 80s when Ronald Reagan endeavored to save America's children from drugs. And James Bond therefore became an American hero while still being British. There's also a really amazing zombie scene in this movie, which is one of the best zombie scenes I've ever seen. And that's impressive considering that this is not a zombie movie by genre. So this is a must watch. If somebody told you that this movie sucked, they need to be smacked in the face and you need to sit down with them and watch this immediately. Make sure your VCR is ready to go. Number six is Porky's Revenge. Personally, I am a bigger fan of the original Porky's, but when I think about these movies objectively, it's clear that the third movie, Porky's Revenge, is the best in the series. The whole series is about a group of high school kids living in Florida who are just trying to have a good time, smoking, drinking, and hooking up with girls, all that kind of stuff, and they run across a really shady nightclub owner who tries to take advantage of them and harass them. They fight back, and this becomes a whole rivalry. This is the movie where everything comes together and the jokes are on fire. The story reaches a climax. Both sides are equally matched. Neither side underestimates the other. They both know what the other is capable of. So not only does it work as a comedy, but it also works as a drama and there's a lot of tension. Um, you could even say it's sort of a horror movie in a sense because the kids have a lot of legit fear of Porky, who not only is shady just in the perverted sense, but also maybe has some murderous tendencies as well. So this is something that I absolutely recommend if you are a fan of comedy. And while you're at it, just go ahead and watch the other two movies also. Number five, The Terminator. If I had to really explain why this movie's on the list, it would just be because it stands out so much from all the other sci-fi movies in the 1980s. This is a movie which does a whole lot of things that other movies simply didn't. It has that fear of computers and automation that we see in a number of other movies like Rotor, but in this case it makes it the threat. Most other 80s movies are all about nuclear annihilation or communism, which granted are much more real threats, but Terminator takes something that seems ridiculous, robots overthrowing us, and makes it terrifying and real. And that is genius. The storyline involves time travel, but unlike those really shitty Back to the Future movies, which don't really have a serious take on time travel or consistent rules, The Terminator does time travel in a way that always makes sense, especially in the early movies. And of course, we have to give Terminator extra points for starting a great franchise. Terminator movies will always fill you up and never let you down, just like a good beer. The Rocky series was pretty good. The first three movies, which all came out in the 80s, were decent. Not great, but decent. Not even honorable mention good, but pretty good. The real problem is that they just didn't have quite enough action. There was way too much dialogue, and the problem with the dialogue is one, it wasn't very good, and two, it featured Stallone speaking in a really heavy New York accent that no one in the world could understand unless you're from the Bronx. Anyway, once we get to Rocky IV, they rebalance the movie to have more action and training and less dialogue that no one can understand. And then the movie finally achieves the potential that this series had all along. This is also the culmination of all the earlier Rocky movies, although you could watch this one in isolation. It has the greatest bad guy, someone who's truly physically superior to Rocky, someone who should have all the advantages and Rocky will really have to gut it out. It has a great training scene, the best one in the series, probably the best one in all 80s movies. 80s movies are known for training montages. This one blows them all away. 
and there is a real obstacle. There's also a real goal for Rocky because it's both personal and patriotic. He has to revenge his friend and show the power of American grit versus communist cheating and steroids and all that kind of stuff. It's also brilliant because it's about revenge, but it's about getting revenge without hate. It's about dignity, honor, and the American way. So Rocky IV, if you had to explain to a kid, especially like a teenager, what it means to be an American and what it means to be honorable and a good sportsman, this is the movie to show them without a doubt. It is even better than Hoosiers, which, as I mentioned earlier, also a good sports movie, but not as good as Rocky IV. Number three... Ghostbusters. For most people, making a list and basing it just on their memory of the 80s or what really stuck with them as a kid when they were watching it on VHS, they would say Ghostbusters is the best film of the 80s, bar none. But they're looking at it from a biased perspective. I'm looking at it from an objective perspective, which is superior and much more insightful. Ghostbusters has a creative plot. It has a great cast. One thing it does really well that a lot of people don't pay attention to is that it respects the beliefs of the religious and superstitious while also kind of poking fun at the idea of there being a bunch of ghosts or a Stay puff Marshmallow Man. Everything is done tastefully and comedically. There's a great blend there. This movie managed to do some things that may have enraged Christians to an extent, but no one protested this movie because it was done so well. Had someone else made this movie in a slightly different way, it would have caused some social disorder, but it managed to not do that and to appeal to everyone regardless of what they believe. The movie promotes free enterprise, and it's also just plain fun. Even if you don't believe in ghosts, and even if you think that Bill Murray's character is a dick, or whatever the case might be, you would still have a fun time watching this movie. And it's hard to see something that has objective fun, but this movie has that quality, and that's why it is truly great. It's also one of the best conservative films ever because it promotes free enterprise, fun, and religious tolerance, so everything about it is right in line with what the Republican Party stands for. Number two, Missing in Action. In this movie, Chuck Norris plays a former POW who returns to Vietnam as part of an ambassadorial mission, and his goal is to find, discover, and expose the fact that other POWs have been held into the 80s by the Vietnamese who are using them as hostages to leverage the United States. This is something that is based on a true story, and a whole lot of people in America were aware of this, but the government never admitted it. Not even Ronald Reagan had the guts to admit that this was going on. So that is the big black mark against Reagan, but let's not get too deep in the politics. This movie is important because while there had been rumors, this was the first time that someone major like Chuck Norris had confirmed what a lot of people already believed. This alerted the public to real suffering by American soldiers. This was both a great movie and a great public service announcement. Normally, Norris's style doesn't really work very well in movies because he is so understated. But in this movie, his acting works brilliantly. They tailored the script to fit what he can do rather than trying to force him to be more outgoing than he is. His understated style works really well and it comes off as the thinly veiled anger of a former prisoner of war who knows that his country is getting raked over a barrel by a bunch of goddamn communists. So it really does work well. And if you've never seen this movie, this is something that is an absolute must-see. Um, it has an important message. In fact, the most important message of any movie coming out of the entire decade. And I would say that if you haven't seen this movie, you need to. If you know someone who refuses to watch this movie, this would be a good one to trick them with and make them watch it. Because this is something that every American needs to be aware of. Especially if you buy... Uh, food or clothes made in Vietnam. You really shouldn't do that. The Vietnamese are an evil communist people and they must be opposed. They still probably have POWs to this day. It's just something that a lot of people have forgotten about, but it needs to be remembered and we need to have more inspections in Vietnam. The first place we have a tie. There are two movies which by my objective standards are equally great. 
And this ends up working out brilliantly in a way that I could not have possibly planned by just subjective means alone. The two best actors of the 80s are Stallone and Schwarzenegger, period, the end. And then Chuck Norris is an important third wheel. He ends up in second place, and now Schwarzenegger and Stallone will share first. The movie of Sylvester Stallone, which is objectively tied for the best movie of the 80s, is Cobra. This is also, by the way, Stallone's very best movie. What this movie does is blend the reality of 80s criminal and police evolution. The police had to become heavier armed because criminals were becoming heavier armed. A lot of crimes were now being committed for no other reason than pure meanness, so the cops had to get a lot tougher and they had to quit dealing with liberal bullshit, especially in the big cities. A lot of other movies explore this. Even RoboCop does it, but it doesn't do it all that well. What the movie here does is focus on what matters. There aren't a lot of dumb B-plots. There aren't a lot of jokes that lead nowhere. There's not a lot of loose ends. This movie is very, very tight, and the writing is superb. All of the one-liners in this movie land, and they land like nuclear weapons. This movie is fucking phenomenal, and if you haven't seen it, then your life is not complete. You need to stop what you're doing right now and go watch Cobra if you haven't seen the movie. And for 1B, we have... Commando is tied for first place. This is without a doubt Arnold Schwarzenegger's best movie of all time. And it is also the best pure war movie of all time. Now granted, it's not based on a real war, but it's still the best war movie ever because it not only portrays the reality of war, but also it shows the power of people like commandos and special forces, their ability to take on and overcome vast odds. It also shows the suffering of war because Schwarzenegger is a veteran who tried to retire, but he's not allowed to because the government keeps calling him back up and getting him involved in their problems. Everything in it is really good. There's a great family dynamic between Arnold and the boy who plays his son. The action is really well done and also realistic. He manages to take on all of these guys, but he does so in a way that is on the level of, say, a solid snake when it comes to being sneaky, but also in an action-intensive way. So he does it in a way that's both very masculine and also very sneaky. And I have to admire that blend because those two things normally do not go together. If I had to really summarize what makes Commando great, it is just like Cobra in the sense that its strength is being very simple to the point, no bullshit, no filler, Everything works, everything's tight, no loose ends, and that is what really defined the 80s. Straightforward action, straightforward expressions of being a man. And that's what Cobra and Commando both do perfectly, and that's why they are tied for the best movie of the 1980s, based on my objective criteria. Until next time, I'm Remarkable Republican, bringing you the truth with truth-flavored bias, signing out.